ordinarily, I am not a big fan of soundtrack CDs that are either inspired by or an alternative version of the original. But with Nightmare Revisited, I throw that belief completely out of the window. I've been listening to this one for, I, I, I don't know, for as long as I have been watching Nightmare Before Christmas. So let's say six, seven, eight years. And actually, quite often, I will go to this one instead of the original motion picture soundtrack when I'm in the mood to listen to certain songs because there are some songs in this that I just love. So I'm going to just go through the tracks really briefly and give some brief overviews of my opinions about these songs and some of the artists involved. Very much welcome your own opinions, which is really why I do this. I don't care about my own thoughts with this because I know I love it. I don't think anybody else cares what I think about it. But if you haven't heard of this and I get to inform you about it and share this with you, then that would make me very happy. If you're a fan of Nightmare but haven't listened to this, it really is a unique little gem that I absolutely adore. So it was actually originally released in 2008, obviously labelled Disney. And we have a total of, there's actually 21 songs. Um, there are 20 on the CD, 21 through the Amazon and I think maybe iTunes MP3s. So we start with the overture. Um, I made no notes about that, no thoughts, pretty standard. The opening, sung by the fabulous Danny Elfman. I, I love him. I was fortunate enough to see him uh, at the Nightmare Before Christmas live concert, which was amazing. I love his vocals. I, I Obviously, when he sings Jack, absolutely fantastic. Marilyn Manson sings This Is Halloween, and I think getting Manson to sing on this is pretty great. It's a you know, it's a really catchy version. I feel like there are certain um, vocals that I miss with this. Um, when you have all of the different characters singing their different lines in the actual version. Um, but it's still a really fun version of this. The All-American Rejects sing Jack's Lament. Uh, I love the energy for this one. It's quite a lot more energetic than the original. And, you know, it's, it's one that I find that I will go to from time to time. With Dr. Finkelstein in the forest, pretty indifferent. Uh, I, I'm not really that bothered about the song originally, so this version doesn't really move me either. Flyleaf's version of What's This is so different. It's a lot more melancholic than... You know, the thing about Jack singing What's This is that it's very chaotic and manic, and you almost feel like you're racing to get to the end of the song before the music stops. And obviously, as Jack's frustration grows and curiosity grows at the snow around him, as does the pacing of the song. That's not the case with Flyleaf's version. It's a lot more slow and delicate and gentle. And I wouldn't say I prefer it. I mean, I'll be honest, I don't prefer any of these to the original. But there are some where, depending on what mood I'm in, I might prefer to listen to it for a different vibe. But this one... Well, that's exemplary of that one. I love What's This, the original. But this version is just something a little bit different and a new way to enjoy the song. I have no real thoughts on the town meeting song, as with um, Dr. Finkelstein, The Forest. Pretty indifferent. Love the strings in the Jack and Sally montage and the Sparkle Horse version of... Also, I love that band name. Uh, of Jack's Obsession is hauntingly beautiful. This one is one you have to listen to through headphones and just, you know, allow yourself to become absorbed and truly connect with it. It's, it's absolutely lovely. Um, no Real Thoughts on Kidnap the Sandy Claws. Uh, it's a song that I really like. I feel like it doesn't sound too different. So it's not really one I'd go to. I'd usually go to the original. Rise Against sing their version of Making Christmas. And this is a lot heavier and a lot more intense but also kind of doesn't sound that different. And I don't know if that makes any sense, but it does in my head. And I, I really, I really enjoy it. Um, Nabed we have is, uh, Nabed, I, I never know how to pronounce that, is quite different, more electric, a lot of fun. And I don't prefer it. I don't prefer it. But certainly if I'm listening to this album from start to finish, rather than just, you know, cherry-picking the songs I want to listen to. I will never skip it. I really like it. 
Okay, Rodrigo E. Gabriela sings Obi Bobi's song, and I have to be honest, nobody will ever beat Ken Page at that song. Even Danny Elfman, who I, you know, was very fortunate to see singing this himself, because I feel like he, he absolutely just had to have a go at singing this at the concert, uh, and obviously his performance was fantastic. Nobody will ever beat Ken Page, though, but it's good. It's really good. I, I really like it. It's quite similar. Um, maybe a slightly different energy, but ultimately it's one that I found to be really quite enjoyable. When it comes to Sally's song, again, I love Catherine O'Hara singing this. I feel like this one's actually on par with Catherine O'Hara's version of Sally's song, but maybe it just sounds slightly different. Both is good, but just different. If you YouTube Sally's song, more often than not, the top recommendations will actually be Amy Lee's version. So I feel like it's one that most people are actually very aware of. And out of all of the songs on here, that is the one that I think is, well, certainly one that I'd heard before actually buying this album and one that I think most people are aware of. It is absolutely beautiful. I don't have any real thoughts on Christmas Eve montage. It's nice. Poor Jack from Plain White Tees. I love, love, love it. It's so emotional. It's so moving. I won't say I like it more than, than Elfman singing it, but it is fantastic, and I do become just lost in this one so easily. Uh, with To The Rescue, I feel like there are different instruments used. My musical knowledge is pretty poor, so I can't really identify exactly what I mean by that, but if you listen to it, um, I feel like you'll probably understand what I mean, and, and I like it. Um, no real thoughts on the finale um, and the closing sung by Danny Elfman brilliant as with the end titles um the kind of the end of the album doesn't feel that different and everything rounds off nicely with regards to the bonus track it's oogie boogie song again this time by tiger army this is very different this is a lot happier a lot merrier it's not quite as sinister as the original version or indeed the version um further up the album it's a lot of fun really thoroughly enjoy it and you know having three different versions of oogie boogie's song to listen to Something that I'm really pleased about. I really, you know, I really like the original. Love these two versions as well. Definitely one of my favourite songs. If you do have a favourite song, either from the original soundtrack or, of course, this version, I'd love to know. If I had to pick a favourite from this, it would probably be either Poor Jack or Sally's song. Not 100% confident, though. There are some really great ones on here. Ultimately, though, nobody will ever beat Elfman's soundtrack song by Elfman and Catherine O'Hara and Ken Page. A lot of fun, really love it. If for some reason you've listened to me waffle on for eight minutes but you've never seen Nightmare Before Christmas, please watch it. I promise you won't be disappointed. Um, it, it, it really is truly magical with one of the best soundtracks ever. I can't fault it. Love this album, love the film, no complaints at all. <laughs> 